see with Tiger Woods, what I first break down is like that they're two separate people, right? Like mm. you got two people. He's living multiple lives, right? Yeah. One is this massively successful life and one is this broken home, this broken soul. Mm -hmm. And and we all know in reality, like that sooner or later, those two are going to meet each other. Hmm. Those two worlds. Like, how long could you possibly keep those separate, right? At some point, oh, dude, your professional yeah. life will have a crash course with your personal life. Yeah. And I think that's what we witnessed. And in his case, literally. I mean, because, like, the news... <laughs> Yes. Uh, found out when he yeah. like crashed his car drunk on the way out of, or it maybe into yes. one of his down the street, one of his houses. Yes. You know? Crash course with his own personal life, a literal crash course. Right, dude. So I think like, man, I really do want to break down. Like, what does it mean to like not be happy yet have everything you have? And like, what would that look like? And I think it does. You do have to have to bring in the moral compass and you do have to yep. recognize um, what was going on and even Tiger Woods himself later said it took me a long time to find out to find something that he had had to say about this yeah like a years looking back because hindsight's 2020 right like sure I kind of want to know like what does he say now what's right. his feeling now on it all because he seems to have gone through some sort of like redemption of his career and pro I mean he's like a uh, on the Titleist team now and is like has he won a major again and you know is seemingly back into this uh pedestal or at least trying to be so you would th well i i mean i used to i tried to watch golf for a while like a lot two years ago okay or last year i think maybe but as i was kind of watching him i i just would never like, like it was hardly ever talked about like this stuff like nobody was talking about no this way. stuff anymore it's like right. kind of either swept under the rug or like everyone's wanting to move on from it but yeah, it's kind of, anyway, keep going. Right. And, and I think I, I want to know these things as well because I want to be successful. I want to be yeah. as successful. I want my kids successful. I want my friends to be successful. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be want them to be be successful at the expense of their soul, at the expense of even on happiness. Yeah. Right? Like I want them to, to be successful in all aspects of their life. Yeah. Probably most importantly, their personal life. Right? Yeah. Um, so I, so it took me a long time to find what would what, what did Tiger Woods have to say about this right and they say here here's a quote from Tiger Woods uh looking back he says Tiger later said I feel I have worked my entire life and deserved to enjoy all the temptation around me I felt entitled wow dude I worked my entire life and deserved what does he say deserved to what I worked my entire life and felt that I deserved to feel no. or enjoy the temptation around me. I feel, I feel I have worked hard my entire life and deserved to enjoy all the temptation around me. Dang, dude. You know, he says, I felt like I was entitled to it. Huh? <laughs> Which is wild, right? And almost for a moment, you could you could empathize with him, or yeah, maybe even sympathize well. with that. Like, yeah, man, like we do that all the time. And and what I mean is, we see that happen all the time. We see it happen with diets, right? Diet mm -hmm. fats. I'm going to suffer all week long, but then I'm going to give myself a cheat day on Sunday. <laughs> sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really not all that different, right? We do things like that. I'm going to suffer now. Um, financially, I'm going to live dirt poor so that in the future I could, uh, indulge on whatever I want. Yeah. One day be able to have the stuff that I want. Yes. <laughs> One day be able to whatever. <laughs> Dang dude. What have been kind of your like takeaways of like what you've, uh, you've learned from this in like coaching your kids? Because when I think about like a father figure who is raising up kids who are just going to like choose what they want and have their way with their careers and their like athletics and sports and no fear. Like I think of you and your kids. Awesome. Like yeah. actually, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, like what, what types of takeaways hit home for you when you're like looking at this story? The takeaways I, I know feel you've talked about some already, but no, um, yeah, th I, I love this question because I even thought I thought about it earlier today as well. Um, I think that that early on and, he, and he living here in Utah, I noticed that people really get their kids involved in sports young, right? Sure. And I was involved in sports young, and, and I cherish that. And a part of that, I believe that that sports don't build character; that they reveal it. 
right? Yeah. So I, <laughs> I, 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 I encourage sports and I like sports, but what I'm getting at is even some of some of the greatest athletes in the world, you know, they're going to focus on it from two years old to 20 years old. And at True. some point that's going to come to an end or it could come to an end for an injury. Right. And then yeah. people will recognize like, Oh, I, I just spent the last 18 years of my life dedicated to this sport. Yeah. And what do I have to show for it? Like, is that all you were? Is that all you want to be known as is as an athlete? Mm. Like, is that all you have? Yeah. You know, Inky Johnson has this phrase. He's like, he says, um, actually it comes, Inky Johnson has a phrase, but this one comes from Martin Luther King. Um, his wife, you know who, who Martin Luther King is, of course. Yeah. Uh, they uh, they asked Martin Luther King's wife in an interview once. They said, um, "Why didn't you ever remarry?" And do you know what she said? Mm -mm. She said, "Because it would have been an automatic downgrade." No. <laughs> wow. Because it would wow. have been an automatic downgrade, right? Like, wow. <laughs> Dang, dude. That makes me think like. <laughs> That makes me think like, how wild is it that, that in your job, in my job, if we died tomorrow, even if we're valuable in our company, we, we'd be replaced in 30 days. We'd be replaced in 30 days, you know? But what about in our home, right? Mm. Like, are you easily replaceable? Mm. Like, are you easily replaceable? In, yeah, not from like a sentimental, like I love you as you type of thing, but like from who you are to your family right like yeah the value that you provide them from like love care providing like, like are you just providing stuff. a paycheck for your family yeah because we can replace that yep are you providing love for your family that's going to be a little harder to replace are you providing leadership hmm. and nourishing their soul okay now we got a lot more to replace mm -hmm. are you being an example Dang okay dude. now we got even more to replace yeah right so like that's something i ask myself like Am I building them to be an athlete that, hey, guess what? Even if the Tom Brady at some point is going to move on, guess what? They have a replacement for him. <laughs> Tiger Woods moved on. They have a replacement. They'll find a replacement for him. Yeah. Kobe moved on. LeBron James took that spot. Or who, whatever NBA or you want Somebody to put in will spot. be the next best. Somebody will be the next best. But, like, I want my kids to represent more than just an athlete. Yeah. You know, I want their, them to be uh, spiritually nourished as well. Yeah. I want them to, to be well-rounded and to know that even if you tried to keep those worlds separate and be separate people, eventually those worlds would collide just like they did for Tiger Woods. Totally. So I, I think that that what I notice and what I recognize in, in fatherhood with them is that, man, it's gonna it takes a lot of time, a lot of visualization, and a lot of work. Wow. You know, and, and it can't be taken for granted and it can't just be walking in into the house and seeing them for 15 minutes before they go to bed. Dang, dude. And that's like what a that has to be like such a well thought out vision, too. Right. I mean, here's an example from you from you of my my recollection uh, is like when we were in Albuquerque and I started training with you guys. Um, I remember one of the first things that you asked me was hey so this was after a few days right and now i'm starting to like jab at you <laughs> during training and like compete with you a little bit uh yeah. during our strength and conditioning stuff and i remember um like two or three sessions in you're like before we were warming up before and you would start asking me about my dad be like tell me a little bit about your dad like i'm i'm really curious like i want to know <laughs> like what was your dad like what type of stuff would he do with you like how you know just asking me about like my father and i remember thinking like <laughs> why is rich asking me about my dad we're like training right now yeah. not that i didn't want to talk about him like yeah. my dad's an incredible human being and uh there's a lot to say about my father my, my mother as well my parents my family but you you were asking and then i asked you about that i was like i'm curious as to like what like you know why why you like to know this type of stuff like I, I think this is really fascinating and you're like i am trying to gather as much information as i can about how to be a good father before i have kids because by the time i have kids it's too late mm -hmm. for me to figure out how to be a good father or what i want to be as a father and dude that was really powerful for me thinking mm -hmm. back to that because because you had you'd been thinking and put thought and preparation into into like understanding where your values were and what you cared about most um, 
and now like you you were in like the fantasy and the theory mode yeah. right because that step with that I was talking about before is like first you fantasize about the outcome and you per, you play it in your mind become emotionally attached and then, then you theorize about it like how specifically would this actually look work out like yeah. and then like details in your mind and then from there build the blueprint and it brings it into reality like when it's executed I mean you're in the execution phase basically right at absolutely. least the execution phase of having kids that are six years old absolutely because like you were saying a couple times ago it's like they can only be six once yeah for that moment yeah, right for that like, moment yep for that moment but Ab absolutely man i think that that that's what i would say to fathers too like man it, like it's so it's, oftentimes we just we transition into fatherhood and we we just mimic what our fathers did right sure. it's just just do the paycheck or maybe just a little bit better right uh sure. and usually a little bit better better means financially maybe we'll do a little bit better with a little bit better but like for me i said no i don't want to do a little bit better what i mm -hmm. want to do is I want to handle this like I do any other thing. Who's the best? I want to know who the best is. And my method wasn't to ask the fathers who the best was or to look at the fathers. The kids. My method was I want to find successful kids. And in a while that you were one of those kids, I'm like, he, he seems like he's a successful kid. I want to know. And I, and I never, I didn't stop asking you during training. Do you remember? I continued, uh, even once I found you in church, in church, yeah. I remember, I specifically remember it. We were on like the, like uh, West side of the, in the foyer. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know why these things come back to me like so vividly. Yeah. You and Kate were there. We were both we were talking. Both there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, and I asked you, I remember asking you this question what do you think the best thing your father did was like what's the best thing he did and do you remember what your answer was? i don't actually no Dude, what did i say i remember like it was tomorrow and i use this philosophy and i really start to see this in my life and in my kids and able to apply it this is what you said you sat there and and this was one of the first times when i could tell you really you were like okay fine rich is gonna pet, pester me on this until <laughs> until i give him give him what he's looking uh, for <laughs> you were like fine i'll, I'll think about a vulnerable it vulnerable answer and, and it may have been you know sometimes there's that awkward quietness you were quiet for a minute huh. and i remember you looked at me and you were like i would say um that he treated us all differently hmm and I was like, wow, that what? That was not what I was expecting. <laughs> like, who, who, like, sure. that, that's not, that can't be true. Like, I remember being a kid, I want to be treated exactly the same. If, <laughs> if my brother gets a candy, I want a candy. Even sure, if yeah. the neighbor gets a candy, I want a candy, right? Like, uh -huh. no, it should, we should be equal. Um, and I thought about that a lot. And I even asked you more, like, well, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean by that? Huh. Uh, so I, I, I kept going, and you were like, well, we're different people, and like, maybe my sister or my brother i don't remember ex it must have been your brother yeah, right yeah old five boys my brother has a different curfew time than i do um and i was like wow that's interesting and then we left it at that i think i had to leave or some and i thought more and more about it and you know what i realized i was like you know what he's really saying you know what you were really saying is he knew us well enough that he knew he needed to treat us differently. That's exactly it. Yeah, because that just doesn't start by saying, <laughs> by like just treating everyone differently just because it's like he, yeah, he, yeah, he, uh, he had taken the time to like actually know who we were, you know? And, and how powerful <laughs> yeah. is that? So for me, I'm like, dude, that's, that's going to go on my list. And that went on my list to this day. And you're asking it, asking me about this and how funny that you gave me one of the that's things so on funny, the list, dude. right? <laughs> like, I don't chances? even remember that until now. <laughs>